To say I was excited for Armored Core 6 is a bit of an understatement. 6 was a game for a long time I had very little faith of even existing at all. The first Armored Core game in over a decade, and my first played as an actual adult. Now having played it though, I have a few things to say. As I was ill recently, my Double Zeta video got a bit delayed. So in the interest of having something ready around now, I thought it would be a good idea to wrap up my initial thoughts on this one. Now having played through all three single player branching paths, having bought all the parts, having played a heap of PvP, having S-ranked... Uh, okay, well I'm still working on that one. Having S-ranked a chunk of the missions, one month after ten years of waiting, how did it end up? Was it, as Gabe said in the Bronze Age, worth the wait? Now let me start by saying, I actually do have self-doubt sometimes. You know, after putting all this effort into a big video, there's a little devil's advocate voice in the back of my head that kind of squeaks out, but are you really sure about that? After putting together a big argument, was it really true? Now why do I bring this up here, and about Armored Core 6? Well, after finishing my big hyper object video, I had that doubt briefly. But then I was right, baby! Oh yeah, I was right. Me, not you. I was correct. I mean, just friggin' look at Armored Core 6. The average screenshot of this game has some gigantic, insane pieces of infrastructure dominating it. Megastructure refineries. Massive mined cityscapes. Towering tree... like... the... Uh, I don't... I don't know, factories, maybe? I don't even know. I'm glad, though, that I brought up blame last time, because... Armored Core 6 is the blamiest blame that ever blamed in from Blamesville. Seriously, when I think about the composition of Rubicon, it appears to be like 20% nickel iron, 3% coral, and 77% railroads and pipes. The raw amount of Nihei-esque logistic megastructure on display is kind of staggering at times. And true enough to my last video, no, 6 didn't include character portraits. As per the tradition of the series, Six carried on the spirit of the megastructure and the hyperobjects pretty heavily. It's a mechanical, massive world. As Zuli the Witch showed in her video, if you scale it with humans, it would be even more colossal. Now, despite the initial guessing at the aesthetic, I actually don't really think Armored Core 6 ended up very Blade Runner-y. Or even really that cyberpunky per se. At least in aesthetic. I think what it 200% felt like was Armored Core or more specifically, a very specific branch of the development of Armored Core. You can feel it as a descendant of that one four-answer mission where you kind of have to ascend up a vertical layout in a canyon, as far as level design goes. Verticality has never been more important to an AC game. The bounce pads, I mean, well, vertical catapults included. But the main reason I bring this up is because it kind of reinforces the hyper-object feel of the world. Rubicon is indeed one gigantic, nested, stacked series of hyperobjects. You go up the wall to get to the massive ice field spaceport and mining areas, you go down the big, made in abyss hole to get to an even bigger abandoned city and vascular plant. Even Coral itself, this thing which, when clustered together, takes on intelligence and can warp reality if enough of it condenses in one place, is another, even better, hyperobject to pile on the list. So, yeah. Contrary to the little voice of doubt in my brain, I was pretty much fucking dead on. With that all being said, and I think I can now pivot to the less hyper fluby philosophical thoughts, to just maybe normal philosophical. Generally, I'm really happy to see Armored Core 6 selling quite well. Even if it's more of a function of the Dark Demon Blood Elden popularity of From Games making that possible. Generally, when you watch mecha shows, you naturally, or at least I do, want to feel that control. You have this big, cool, mechanical power fantasy, a big, complex military machine. You really want to play that when you see it, really badly. And generally, having a good modern mecha game, that being an armored core, to fill that niche feels pretty good. I find it kind of funny Donkey mentioned mecha games as some kind of archaic genre, when in reality, the only reason they went away or declined was predominantly down to companies focusing on more profitable business models of the FPS, car, slash sports game genres. The appeal of Mecha never went away. The audience of Mecha never went away. It was just slightly more niche than the Corpo Shoggoths only ever want to squeeze maximum profits out of minimum inputs. So it kind of got cut. The current enthusiasm around 6, I feel, embodies this a lot. 
Unsurprisingly, it turns out a lot of folks still really, really like to play mecha games. Especially the ones where you can customize your machine to your own personal tastes. It's really fun. Or rather, I guess it's always just been fun. What this does mean is the Armored Core games will at least keep going for the foreseeable future, which is generally pretty good. Maybe most idealistically, other companies will see the success of Armored Core and maybe try their hand at something similar. Now, for those of you waiting for my, like, I don't know, hour-long breakdown of the mechanical design, uh, don't worry, it's coming one day. First, I need to clear my plate of all the kind of Gundam that I've stacked onto it. I have a lot to say, and Six has added even more with its modernization of the aesthetic and design language of Armored Core. Now, the Kawamori video, that's probably coming much sooner, hopefully. But yeah, generally, as a whole, I would say AC6 turned out pretty good. I would put it in the top 5 of the better AC games, alongside entries like For Answer, Armored Core 3, and Armored Core 1. However, I do have a few criticisms and there is some rough spots here. I wanted to say that I liked a lot of it first, before I go into my issues with 6, so that you know, generally, despite what I'm about to say, I enjoyed the experience. Now, that being said, let's move on to the problemy bits. I think generally, a lot of depth was sacrificed for accessibility, in keeping with the trend of Armored Core. The first game is the simplest one of a generation. However, in addition, I have no doubt one of the development priorities of 6 was get them dang old Dark Souls kitties in the door. So with that, we got a lot of the end results. First off, the most obvious stuff is just what's missing. Weapon arms, something I know 5th gen also lacked, are also lacking here. I think generally this is a big shame because weapon arms are fun and an all-in commitment as a build. You lose the variability of weapon slots, and you get the power of a very specific, high-commitment weapon type. With the fact 6 lets you fire back weapons and arm weapons at the same time, I do think it's a real shame weapon arms are not present in the parts roster, as this makes 6th gen possibly the friendliest in terms of weapon combos. The prioritization of melee weapons going on the left arm I also find a little strange, as well as shields being stuck on the back left slot. I don't really know why you couldn't double these as doing so is kind of a big commitment anyways, and you lose out on damage or range damage in the process. Really, when a lot of the really gross meta PvP builds already double down on powerful weapon types in both arms, weapon arms seem like a sad loss to me. In the past, some of the more all-or-nothing, high-skill, high-risk builds use them, and I'm still hoping for some, I don't know, arm action in the DLC. This also brings up the lack of shoulder extensions. For those familiar, shoulder extensions in previous AC games were basically the last little garnish you added to your steak legs and potato weapons and fried asparagus and garlic internal parts. They let you add a little more damage or helped you deal with missiles via flares, or if you wanted to be that guy, you could bring jamming parts. Now sadly, jamming is a hand weapon type and flares are completely missing, as is all anti-missile systems really. Speaking of which, missile gameplay in 6th gen is maybe the most smooth-brained it's ever been. With no decoys, no AMS cores, and no flares, there's a reason people can cheese PvP with missile spam quad leg builds. Unless you can play around cover or terrain, the missile matchup in 6th gen just isn't very interesting or all that fun, I feel. Now I know, I know, Argon, you love For Answer, and For Answer was the most Etano missile circus AC games ever been. As you said earlier, it's all about accessibility. Of course the missiles are going to be more simplistic, yeah I know, it's just even the similarly complex games like early 3rd gen still retained AMS cores and decoys at the bare minimum. Yeah, it's very accessible, hence why you get idiots, you know, making quad leg missile builds, but I feel it lacks the kind of player retaining depth that will keep people on when it's so comparatively shallow. Another unfortunate victim was Assault Armor. Whereas in 4th gen, Assault Armor was something you had to build around and had to choose and sacrifice EN potential for, now it's really just plug and play. It's very accessible, it's also very, very smooth brain to use. The only real downside is you could have maybe been using Pulse Protection to negate Stagger. So it's not really a huge trade-off or a commitment like it was in 4th gen. But that kind of gets me to the real elephant in the room. Stagger. I think, as a whole, I would say it was worthwhile to at least experiment with integrating it into Armored Core as a concept. After all, Sekiro is very popular, and it has had an entire gameplay loop built around it, so it was worth a try. In execution though, I feel it sadly simplifies the usual gameplay diversity AC thrives on. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, simply put, in 4 Answer Multiplayer, a game from 10 plus years ago, a game which hasn't had an update to its weapon balance in 
thousand years, had what it felt to me like more variety in what worked. Even earlier AC games outside of any PvP shared this. Earlier AC games let you customize a build that focused on some kind of comfortable balance of movement, damage, and HP. And as for For Answer, despite being abandoned for, you know, as long as it has been, the builds you could use could make use of a broader array of potential weapons and approaches. In 6th gen PvP, it really is all about staggering and nothing else. Even single player has this. The current atrociously laughably bad Zimmerman meta is basically down to just that, the weapon's ability to do stagger and then damage on stagger. Now the Helsing ass handgun build I use in PvP most of the time is also built for that, out staggering the opponent. Quad leg missile builds that sit on the ceiling are aiming to out stagger you while also being as hard as possible to hit. But what about laser tanks? Isn't that just about DPS? What about tanks in general? They don't focus on that. Mm, yeah, they do because they're driving around in the hardest leg type to stagger, so they can ignore it and focus on said damage. Oh good, I staggered a quad leg. Oh wait, they're still in the friggin' ceiling. Maybe, and this is my biggest suggestion, maybe just add hard knockdown, pretty please. Generally, as interesting as the attempt was, I think the overwhelming damage you can do to a staggered opponent and their inability to dodge makes it maybe too flattening of a mechanic. It doesn't feel like a fun jousting between partners, it feels very cheese favoring. Maybe it was something which built up more slowly, or maybe if it had some means of negation that was a little more in depth, it would be good. But as is, it's arguably the biggest black spot on AC6's game design. But Argon, I don't play PvP. I only care about the customization in single player. Okay, fair enough, but the problem is there as well. The bosses really show this off the most. I made sure to beat all of the bosses at least once, or on my first attempt, with a good boy build. That is, a rifle or something kinda normal, a pile bunker or laser blade, one missiles on one slot, and one grenade cannon on the other. An honest to goodness mixed build. That makes them way way more rewarding to fight in general. But with the customization of AC, you can just cheese the crap out of most of them instead if you don't feel like putting the effort in. A tank with dual railguns, or grenade cannons, and dual gatling guns makes them, most of them, pretty friggin' trivial. Which is kind of a shame. Now, are they the tightest FromSoft bosses? No, not really. They're kind of messy. They just throw out a lot of damage all over, and it feels more like Toho or than you know, Dark Souls at times, if I'm being perfectly honest. I do very much pity FromSoft here. Making a boss is really about making a test for the player's skills, and when you have customization on the level of AC, it's like making a test where someone can just black out the entire sheet of paper with a paintbrush, or eat it, or fill it out in a completely different language. It's very hard to design a good boss when the player's abilities to build can be all over the place in terms of their skill level. You have to basically build a boss to be able to counter something like a dozen possible build variations. So in other words, you need to make 12 boss fights out of each boss. So the fact the bosses in 6 are, admittedly, a little sloppy, I'm very understanding as to why. It's just like in PvP, if you can dump stagger into them, you can squish them with a fraction of the effort my good boy build had to use. It's very funny to cheese, but it's not very satisfying to beat. And if you've waited 10 years to fight some of these bosses, that makes it only worse. So those are most of my big mechanical issues with 6. It sounds pretty negative, and it kind of is. I do hope From improves or adds I don't know, some more depth to the way 6th gen plays. Maybe in DLCs, or in another game. I am very much looking forward to AC6 Verdict Answer Another Raven Arena. Now, one last thing I do want to compliment, to maybe end on a bit of a higher point, is absolutely the characterization. More than a lot of previous AC games, the characters really worked out pretty well, I feel. None of them are masterfully complex or Shakespearean in their writing, but they get some nice routine interaction, messages, and little calls, which gives them a lot of room to fill out who they are and what they want to do in this world. It feels like a nice, solid little science fiction cast of characters playing out this Corpo Nightmare Hellscapes plot. On their own, I don't think any of them individually are amazingly well written, but as a whole, they are greater armored parts that add up to a full core's worth of cast. So there it is, those are my thoughts pretty much on 6, one month after 10 years. I hope you enjoyed this short one, ZZ's vid will be coming up next, and woo boy, will it be a special one to look forward to. Oh, what's that? Oh, you want, you want something a little more? A little dessert? Something cool? 
a little montage, huh? Well, seeing as you asked so nicely.